yourselves for a battle of epic proportions between two titans. Feast upon their voices and revel in their words. This is Dueling Ogres. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> what you do? I'm just an idiot. Just in general? Yeah, just stupid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll agree with that. Good, good. This isn't even going to end the outtakes. I'm going to start the show like that. Oh, that's the uh, beginning of the show? That's the beginning of the show. Hello, Ogres, and welcome <laughs> to episode 225. Thank you for joining us, as always, on this horripilating Sunday evening, Earth date, October 30th, 2022. I'm your host, Remington Hitchcock, and with me, as always, is my beautiful, wonderful, stupendous, best friend ever, co-host, Brandon Full. Say hello, Brandon. Damn, what an intro. I don't think I can top that. I don't you want you to a, top you it. You brought a tear to my eye. Good. I love making you cry. <laughs> <laughs> it was a spooky tear because it's the day before Halloween. Ooh, that's why it's horripilating. Yes. What did you say the definition was of horripilating? To, to cause goosebumps. To cause goosebumps. So everybody or the now, act of getting goosebumps. The act Something of to do with goosebumps. Just listening to goosebumps, watching goosebumps on television. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Carl Stein. Did you ever yeah. read Goosebumps books? Uh, I read a couple, three of them. I uh, let's see the the puppet one. Oh yeah, Slappy. Yeah, I, I specifically remember the the puppet one. That's the only one that I remember sp specifically reading. I think I read two or three of them, but that's the one I remember. Is that what started your puppet fetish? Yes, yes. That's well. It, I think it is. The, or the reason why I do remember it is because I always had a fascination with, um, what's it called? Ventriloquism? Ventriloquism, yes, yes. Yeah, I, um, we used to go to the beach when I was younger, and I would always hit up the magic shops, mm -hmm. and I bought a book on ventriloquism, and my goal was to become a ventriloquist. Yeah. I was maybe 11 or 12. Yeah, I always thought that'd be a really cool skill to have to be able to throw your voice. But whenever mm. you're you're that age, at least for me, I heard throwing your voice and I was like, man, I can make it sound like people are behind doors and stuff. That's awesome. Right, right. It's like, eh, not, not, not quite. Yeah. Yeah. You can make it look like a fake doll is talking directly beside you. <laughs> directly beside you. Hello. How are you doing today? Very well. <laughs> thank you. I don't have my camera on for you, so you couldn't see it, but it was very impressive. Holy shit, it's like we have a third person on the podcast. Hello, it is a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Were you actually doing that with your mouth closed? Yeah. Yeah, I could tell. It was good. Thank you. <laughs> I read a lot of Goosebumps growing up and really enjoyed the series. Um, I actually mm -hmm. listened to a podcast now called Goose Buds where three guys review Goosebumps books. They went through every single book and did an episode on each one. And it's really funny. I recommend yeah. it. Cool. Oh, I think I figured out, by the way, why the CPU is hating what I'm doing right now. It has to do with these uh, little circles around our, around our guys. That's what the problem is. Just those little circles? Yeah, um, it's a plug-in that allows me to make these little circles. I can do it a different way, which I'm probably going to because apparently this is really fucking intensive. Um, but it's it's doing it via calculations instead of just being a mat. Okay. So it's it's putting the um, it's putting the the pinch on the old uh, processor, even though by rights it shouldn't. It's a fucking i5 7600 or whatever <laughs> shouldn't be that hard for it to deal with but whatever yeah 
my computer's been kind of chug-a-lugging too. Like it's been running fine, but the fan's been running pretty high. Mm. And I just had it apart about a week ago to install a new hard drive in there. Yeah. And it's not like dusty or anything. So yeah. I don't know. I think it's just not as good of a computer as I was hoping it would be when I built it. Yeah. It plays everything I want it to play, but uh, a little well, wild. And that's that's really all that matters, right? Yeah. Uh, that's all that matters. Ginger used part of her um, school money uh, to get a new computer. And we got it, uh, I think it was right before vacation. Yeah, I think you were telling me a little bit about it, and I think it was like a day or two before vacation, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. And the video card was either A, not registering, or B, um, making little pink sparkles come across the screen. And uh, so I called Cyber Power PC, which is where we got it. And I was like, you know, I mean, I've just I've never seen this before because I hadn't. I'd never seen a a, uh, a graphics card artifact in that way. Yeah. So it was it was foreign to me. I was like, you know, I've worked on computers. I build my computers as a rule. Um, you know, I picked out all the parts in this one. Uh, and I've just, I've never seen that. And he's like, oh, it sounds like it's artifacting. I was like, oh yeah, that, of course that is what it is. <laughs> so I felt a little dumb for not, like not thinking of that. But like I said, I've never had one artifact that way. So it was the, it ended up being the graphics card. Yeah. So we had taken out her old, her old one from her other computer and put it in to the new computer. And it's just, I mean, fuck it even runs wow at at a at a good clip so, so are you waiting on them to send you a new graphics uh, card then so yes well yes and no we just got the new graphics card friday uh it's on my list of things to do today hopefully <laughs> Uh, to put it into her computer, but she's also got homework to do. So probably not going to do it today. Might do it Tuesday because I'm off Tuesday. So. I mean, to be fair, it takes like 10 minutes to put a graphics card in. Oh now. yeah. Yeah. It's not hard, but if she's on the computer, I can't very well do that. Now, can I smarty pants? <laughs> you can, it'll be fine. It won't do anything to the computer to yank no, out a graphics no, card. while no, it's running. It'll be fine. It'll, it'll be, be fine. Well, here's, here's, here's the real pisser. Um, something else that I completely fucking forgot about when I was building the computer, I was like, okay, so the graphics card isn't working. I'll just use the onboard one. No big deal. I, the, uh, CPU that I put in there does not have the capability of powering the onboard GPU. Okay. Because some of them do and some of them don't. It just depends on the model that you buy. So you can get processors that won't run without a GPU? No, 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 I no. Mean, like won't output? Yeah. So the, the, when you, w w uh, blah, 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 sorry, on your motherboard, when you have your HDMI plug in that nobody ever uses because everybody gets a graphics card. Um, mm. The processor is the one that actually processes the video if the processor has the chipset to do that. Yeah, so yours doesn't is what you're saying. Yes, yes, yes. Which okay. is something I fucking completely forgot about. <laughs> that's honestly, if I were building a computer, that's something I wouldn't think about either. Yeah. And that's just because, you know, I'm going to get a fucking graphics card. So why do I even need to worry about something like that? Yeah. Turns out when you have a graphics card, a brand new graphics card that's artifacting, you might want to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for having a backup GPU. <laughs> I've been struggling with whether I want to upgrade my computer to Windows 11 or not. Oh, yeah? I know that this is the kind of stuff people tune in for with Dueling Ogres is to hear us talk about our computers. But yeah, I've been considering getting to Windows wait, wait, 11. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. 
a nerd podcast, self-purported nerd <laughs> podcast talking about building computers? Unheard of, sir. Okay, continue. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks really slick from what I've seen. A couple of computers at work have 11 installed on them now. And I've played around. Unfortunately, you need something. Uh, have you heard of a TPM module? I have heard that terminology. I do not know what it is. I don't know what it stands for. I don't remember what it stands for, but it's some sort of like protection that goes into your computer. It's like a little chip on the motherboard that can encrypt your files and connect them only to the specific motherboard. And it does some other stuff too. Trusted um, platform module. Yeah, it's basically like a... Uh, just adds an extra layer of protection to your computer. Well, Windows 11 requires a TPM 2.0 module to work. Huh. My motherboard has one on it, but it's turned off by default. So I can mm -hmm. go into my motherboard and turn it back on and then download Windows 11, but I'm kind of afraid that it's not going to I'm not going to be able to run the programs that I use now. Why why well, just because Windows 11 is kind of new, and I'm not talking about the major programs. The major programs I'm not worried about, but like streaming through Discord onto OBS while I'm running a uh, Game Boy Advance emulator and doing saves on that. It's just a lot of stuff that I'm afraid might not connect with Windows 11. My setup as I have now works fine for me. Right, yeah. And honestly, there's no reason to upgrade if you don't have to. Um. Unless you're really concerned about your uh, TP or having TPM. No, I'm not concerned about that. I just kind of want the new shiny thing, you know? Yeah, for sure. I don't know. That's one of the th I'm kind of in the camp of I'll just run with. Of course, I ran. What was it? Windows 2000 um, yeah. server edition for fucking years into XP <laughs> before I, I finally had to get XP because I was building a new computer and I couldn't find my Windows 2000 disk. <laughs> One of your computers, your uh, Windows wasn't legal and it just had it in the corner for the longest time. Do you remember which one that was? Uh, all of them, almost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Except for this one. This one I actually purchased Windows before or for everything else was a uh, was a broken copy of Windows. And that was Windows 2000 uh, Server Edition. OK. Yeah, so, you yeah. did have that one for a long time. Yeah, I, that's because it was fine. And it, honestly, it was more secure than Windows XP for about half of XP's life. Yeah, but were you really concerned about security or was it just because that's what you had on hand? Back then, I was a lot more concerned with security. Now I'm now I'm still concerned with security, but back then I was more the like, oh, I want to be that, you know, computer nerd that's constantly hiding their tracks on the Internet and, you know, yeah. turning off tracking and making sure that all my cookies are cleaned out every time I close my browser and all of that shit. And then I was like, you know, it's kind of nice to get personalized ads for shit that I actually want. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. You can just have you can have all of my shopping. It's fine. <laughs> Well, yeah, you were telling me about that app you had where yeah. you take pictures of your receipts. And I, in my head, I was thinking like, man, that's giving a lot of information away to yeah. this random app. Yeah, yeah. And it is. And you're right. But who fucking cares? Like, OK, so they're, they're like, all right, so here's here's a fucking coupon for 50 cents off of that thing that you always buy constantly. It's, I mean, all right, cool. Or I'm buying this shit all the time anyway. Why not, you know, put it into an app, get points to where I can get a free gift card. <laughs> so you're gladly selling it. your freedom for gift cards. I'm gladly selling my uh, buying preferences. It's not my freedom. No, it's your freedom. That's what they're that mm. is what is happening is you're that's, selling your freedom. That's not true <laughs> for gift cards. That's not true. Not freedom. Maybe my buying habits. My habits. I'm selling my habits so I can make more money to feed said habits. I would say your freedom to privacy is what you're selling. Yeah, but why? Uh, like, why do I care? Like, why should I care? Like, as long as my passwords are good 
as long as people can't get into you know the the more important things yeah. and i i still rotate my passwords all the time well because we i'm had not issues concerned with that where we lost our dueling ogres for a couple hours right because mm -hmm. somebody got our password Mm hmm. Yep. And I had it changed with I had it changed. Well, it wasn't even a couple of hours. It was. Maybe 30 to 45 minutes, and that's because I get notifications on everything. Yeah. So immediately I was like. A computer that was not recognized and I messaged you. I was like, hey, did you log in? You were like, no. And I was like, oh, fuck. All right. So time to go into fucking. Ugh. snapping or cracking my knuckles and <laughs> time to go into uh, nerd mode and change all the passwords and yeah so i stay on top of it you know yeah except when it comes to receipts yeah because i don't really care if they knew that i bought some fucking tuna for the cats Somewhere there's an evil villain who's wringing his hands and he's like, yes, he's bought the tuna again. Good, good. <laughs> One more tuna and I will be free. <laughs> I mean, if my buying habits, if my purchasing habits are uh, freeing megalomaniacs with uh, incomparable power, then I might take it into consideration not sharing <laughs> that information. <laughs> so if you're buying tuna is somehow slowly freeing an evil wizard yeah. you might think twice about that amazon coupon yeah um so i want to hear before we get into stories i want to yeah. hear about your vacation oh yeah is there anything interesting to talk about with the vacation anything cool happen i mean it was it was a bunch of firsts for me um so I went to the Bahamas. I went on a cruise, actually. Uh, it was a five-day cruise. Um, Monday, we left port and got back into port on Friday. Um, hold on. I wasn't sure if I was going to burp or not. I'm glad that you announced it, though. It's like it's right there and it doesn't want to do anything. Hold on. I'm going to force it. Ugh. OK, I mean, you heard it, but nobody else did. I, I muted myself, so <laughs> I, I was ugh at hearing it myself regardless. Yep. Mm -hmm. OK, so anyway. Uh, so it was a cruise to the Bahamas. Uh, we hit Coco Cay, which is uh, Royal Caribbean's private island. And then. Um, all of all of the cruise places like have a private island. It's honestly not all that crazy to have a private island. Apparently, if you've ever watched that Mr. Beast video, it's like not that much money um, in like in the scheme of like owning land, like an island out in the middle of nowhere. It's like surprisingly not as much money as you'd think it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we did that. And then uh, the next day we went to Nassau. And that was cool, too. Um, a lot of swimming, uh, a lot of uh, eating. Uh, the boat just is, like, massively huge. I think when we finally got into the main, uh, the main hall area, it was just, I, I think I went, I think that's when I went, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, shockingly big. Yes, which is something that I don't really do. I'm just like, that God, I like I, the boat looked massive anyway. And I was just like, oh, this is a fucking big ass boat. And then I get in there and I was like, holy shit, like there's just so much room. And it was insane. Uh, after so it was my first time on a flight. My first time on a cruise. How'd you do Not, on the flight? Uh, did well. The only thing that the the only thing that I did not do well with the first time because I w I wasn't expecting it is as we uh, ascended 
and the air started getting thinner, but it was right before they started uh, pressurizing the cabin. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this shortness of breath that happens. Yeah. And being an asthmatic, I'm acutely aware of that. So, like, I, I was like, <sighs> just trying to make sure that I was getting air because this, it's it's something that makes me very uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, the definitely. second the second time around, I I I did just fine with it. Uh, although I the second pilot seemed to like ascend a hell of a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> he was so, like, "Let's get this done." Yeah, like that. Th he was he was fucking zooming. Um, but that was fine. That was cool. Uh, I have video of us taking off. It was like less than a minute from the time when we uh, started on the tarmac to um, when we were in the air, like once we got into position on the runway. And then by the time we were in the air, it was like less than a minute, which was insane to me. So I have video of that. Um, so first cruise, uh, first time out of the country, because technically it's not in the United States anymore when you go out in the cruise and go to Nassau. Um, yeah. And when we came back, we had a day before we, our next flight, which was the following Sunday. Um, we went to Disneyland. What? Yeah. Disneyland or Disney World? Disney wor World. You are in Florida, right? Yeah, Disney World. Okay. Yeah. They're all the same. How <laughs> Except was it? for having wildly different uh, <laughs> rides and attractions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was it was fine. Uh, Ginger did not have as good of a time as I did, uh, but that's because she does not handle crowds very well. She's not a big um, not a big theme park person. So. Oh, what a, also, of course, the ship was big and there were uh, going back to the cruise real quick. The ship was big, certainly. And there was uh, a lot of. Riding the elevators in there, but I also put in way more. St I, th I think it was like I walked like 43 miles or something in a week. Holy shit. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. So you came back from this vacation all tan and svelte? Well, I didn't really tan all that much. We we were pretty heavy with the old uh the old uh suntan lotion. Suntan lotion, yep, sorry. So My brain you're shut notoriously down. a hairy man. Yes. Does suntan lotion get in the hair? Or does oh, yeah. it all mat together? Yeah, it mats it all together. Ugh. Yep, it's pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see here. Um, I walked double the amount of steps almost that week. My daily average of steps was 13,355, which is about six miles, I think. It was 93,486 steps for that week. So... Three forty six, five foot ten. Uh, forty one point nine two miles. Over the course of the week. Yeah. Or no, so, so sorry, forty two point five five miles. Whenever you were on the islands, did you see anything cool? Because I imagine going to the islands are like big tourist traps where there's people trying to sell you your their wares as soon as you get off the boat. Not as much on the private island. Uh, on the on Nassau, yes, that was a thing. Did you buy anything cool? Um, we bought some rum cakes. I got to eat at a uh, at a local eatery. 
so that was nice. Uh, Jeremy and I, uh, which is Ginger's brother, uh, Jeremy and I went back out after uh, we brought the girls and the baby back to the boat because um, their their kid came along. Um, and he and I went back out because I wanted to eat some more local. I wanted something local. I had uh, conch. Conch? Mm-hmm. Like the stuff that comes from a conch shell? Yeah. Like the animal that was from that that is a conch. I did not know there was an animal in there. Yeah, I mean, why why would the shell exist if not to house an animal? I don't know. I don't know how fucking shells work. I'm not a shellologist. <laughs> what is it? Is it like a crab or a lobster or something? Some sort of crustacean? Uh no. I don't know if it's considered a crustacean or not. Um, it is a, it's basically a sea snail. Ugh. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a mollusk. There we go. Gotcha. Mm hmm. So, yeah, that's, uh, and there's, there's. It's kind of like, um. It was a little bit like um, octopus. Okay. Uh, just in kind of the chewiness of it. I, it was fried conch. So, of course, with a lot of seafood, if uh, if you fry it too long, it's it gets a little chewy. So. And I don't know, honestly, th th this being the only time that I've had conch, uh, whether that is something that you can account for in the preparation and cooking of it or if that's just how it always is it's just a little bit on the chewy side you should have got a um bumper sticker that says conk if you're horny <laughs> i should have i should have i agree <laughs> but you know hindsight's 2020 i guess mm -hmm. yep it is it does sound like you had a good trip though yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the cruise, 10 out of 10, we would do again. Uh, also, the very last night that we were there, I found a, a fucking rubber ducky that was just sitting there. And it had a little tag on it, and it was like, uh, keep or take your choice, or hide, rehide, basically it was like, rehide the ducky for the next person, or take it with you, you know, your choice. And yeah. apparently that's there's a Facebook group that that's that's what people do. They leave little rubber duckies that are like themed and. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty neat. It's a cute little thing. So what would you so, do with the ducky? I mean, we kept that shit. <laughs> we don't know where we're going to go go on a cruise or again or not. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did you put it on the Facebook page that you found one? I did. I even made it a th uh, a 3D image <laughs> <laughs> of course you did because it gave me the option i was like fuck it you can you can zoom around this little ducky <laughs> <laughs> it's a private group though so apparently i can't show it no <laughs> oh. so yeah all right let's do some fucking stories and some shit well you didn't ask me how i've been oh you're you right jerk. i didn't well you got me talking about the vacation and i forgot i'm sorry um i don't really have much to say honestly i've been working a lot um, I've been doing my other podcast. So I'm going to plug that here. It's called We're Probably Not Okay, which is a mental health podcast I do with two other friends. Um, we, we've been doing that a lot. We've also been streaming Pokemon on YouTube. Or not streaming, but uploading Pokemon on YouTube under We're Probably Not Okay. So you can search that and find it there. Yeah. Um, and honestly, that's about it besides working. I've talked about it on the other podcast, but I'll mention it here too. I work at uh, the library of Ashurbanipal, as we've established. And there are people who are trying to get a book band but, yeah. at my library. But not only are they trying to get a book band, but the city council has now censured my library for carrying obscene materials. So I've been in, in the middle of that and very nervous about it because there's also a levy coming up that accounts for a very large chunk of the library's funding. And yeah. if the levy doesn't pass then there's 100% going to be our cuts and maybe even jobs cut completely. Yeah. So that has me a little stressed too. Um, what else? I started ADHD meds. I think last time we recorded, I had started them. 
Mm -hmm. How are they doing for you? They're doing well. They switched me meds Uh because the Adderall I was originally on, there's a shortage lasting until February. Oh, okay. Where you're just not going to be able to get it. So they Uh switched me to an XR different kind of medication. Well, yeah, that's about it. It's working well for me. I feel good. I was going to say, is the different, like, do you notice a difference between the two? Well, with the Adderall, I was taking two, one in the morning and then one after lunch. And with this one, I only take one in the morning and it lasts me all day. It's yeah. not as intense as the Adderall was at first. Like the Adderall, when you first start taking it, is like you're taking speed. Before your body gets used to the dosage, you're just speeding balls, at least I was. <laughs> um, with this new medication, I guess probably because I'd already had Adderall in my system, this new medication didn't really do that. But I can still feel like an uptick of energy, which helps a lot. Yeah. I just feel better about getting stuff done. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's been good. I also kind of worry about the addiction aspect of it, although I've been taking it as prescribed. I haven't taken any more than that. Uh And I don't really like the effects of speed, but I still worry about it, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's because you're a worrier anyway. Uh, As long as you are continuing to do it the way you're supposed to be doing it, whether you're addicted or not doesn't really matter because it's something that you're probably going to end up taking for the rest of your life anyway. (laughs) Yeah, true, I guess. <laughs> um, I am v- very curious. I, I think I'm going to go to another place that uh, somebody at work told me about. Uh, she was like, yeah, I'm f- 43, I think she was. I, I don't remember exactly, 43, 46, something like that. She was like, I just found out a couple years ago that, you know, my ADHD, or I have ADHD. And, uh, you know, I told her about my experience with my or with the the person who I had to, you know, look into it and see if I'm diagnosed with it and how unhappy with the way that I was diagnosed or rather not diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So technically, I do not have a diagnosement of ADHD, but I check so many of the boxes on the spectrum for it that I'm just like, I don't believe you. So I'm going to uh, go to this other place and see if I can get a difference of opinion. Yeah, well, that's probably a good idea. I mean, especially if you feel like you check all the boxes. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough with my therapist that I went in there and I was like, look, I was diagnosed with ADHD 10 years ago. I haven't taken Adderall in forever but I'd like to try it. And he was like, okay, how many milligrams you want? (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Sweet. Okay. Um, I, he wasn't, I don't want it to sound like he's a pill pusher because he's not a pill pusher. He just, we trust each other at this point. He knows that I'm not trying to drug shop. Yeah. And I think that that's kind of part of what was happening to, uh, is I don't know if she just got this idea in her head or, or if she's just the type of person to not prescribe medication um, that maybe I was trying to vie for it. And it's just like, I don't, I try to avoid taking pills as much as I can. Like I, I'll fucking hold off on taking Tylenol or, or Advil or naproxen until it's to the point where I'm like not able to function the way I want to function because yeah. of pain. Um, so it's not it, I don't like taking pills. Um and I stressed that like I don't really like doing it. But if it's something that I need then I I I want to have it so I can, you know, be more productive and be less scatterbrained and be um fucking less squirrel, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because and my general practitioner put me on um, Wellbutrin, which I think we've talked about, and that's definitely helped some. Uh, I have a, I have more ability to focus on tasks that I don't necessarily want to do than I did before. But there's still a large instance of me like just completely losing hours uh, because I have micro on something and I was like oh I don't have the time to do the four other things that I need to fucking do <laughs> because you get micro focused on the little stuff mm-hmm. yep that's that's one of my big ones 
is micro focusing. Well, I can also tell you, I don't know how much it may help you, but I took my new ADHD med yesterday and I drank a coffee and I played Minecraft for four hours straight. <laughs> so <laughs> only stopping I mean, to pee. I mean, is that something that you wanted to do, though? Yeah, it was. And normally whenever I go to play video games, I can't play them for very long because I start mm -hmm. to feel guilty. Yeah. I mean, if but you nope. didn't have anything to do, then fucking by all means, play Minecraft for four to six hours. Fuck it. <laughs> but yeah, you want to get into some stories? Because we've been going a while already. Yeah, we've actually been... Of course, we haven't recorded for a while, so um, that's... Brandon is shoving that wholly on me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I put it in your hands to tell me when you were okay to record again, yep, and then I never he heard from you. He did, and I d didn't fully realize that that's what was happening. So uh, I I was like, oh, okay, well, uh, he hadn't got back hold of me, so I guess maybe he found something else to do. <laughs> so There's nothing was... else I'd rather be doing than dueling ogres. Oh. Oh, hey. Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get into some stories. You want to go first or you want me to go first? I don't know. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. What'd you throw? Paper. Uh, book. Oh, you beat me. You get to go <laughs> first. Fuck. Well, fine. If I'm going to go first, uh, what, what kind of news do you want? Do you want science? Do you want entertainment? Or do you want uh, old uh, things? Things that, <laughs> that are old. Things, that, things are that are old. Thousands of years old. That sounds suspiciously like science as well. Yes. I mean, it's science, but it's not. It's old science. It's old science. Science of Did the you old. you hear about rubbing an onion on a wound? No. That's old science. <laughs> um, let's go with entertainment. All right, fine. This is a little like social commentary, too, as well. Um, apparently, uh, the fellow who played um, Shang-Chi uh, got into a little bit of a hot water. Because the internet's fucking stupid. Okay. So, uh, Simu, how do you say how do you say his name? I I, I didn't even think to look that Simu Liu. I have no fucking clue. You're asking the wrong person. So, uh, Simu's comments on Chadwick Boseman at Wakanda Forever premiere spark outrage among fans. I roll already, but okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh. Marvel superstar Simu is receiving backlash from fans for seemingly benign comments he made on the red carpet of the Black Panther Wakanda Forever premiere when discussing the legacy of Chadwick Boseman. Sporting an all-black fitted suit and matching black spectacles, uh, Simu expressed his excitement at seeing how the upcoming Black Panther movie plans to explore this next phase of its story sans Bozeman. In speaking with The Hollywood Reporter, he said, I think what I'm reminded of more and more, especially being on this carpet, is the importance of allyship and the importance of coming together and celebrating not only our own cultures, but also each other's and each other's battles and fights, and I could not be more grateful to be here. However, it was his follow-up comment that apparently struck the wrong chord with fans. I know that I very much follow in Chadwick's footsteps, so I'm very grateful that you made that comparison, and I'm hoping that I can live up to it. The people got pissed about that? Yep. The reactions from fans were immediate, pouring in through every crevice of Twitter, because Twitter is toxic as fuck. Mm-hmm. Several criticized Simu for hogging the spotlight and having the gall to compare himself to Bozeman, who passed oh, away in sake. 2020 from colon cancer. Yes. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, some of these comments were stuff like... Uh, Simu turns over in, his, in bed and you can hear the faint rustle of just a singular pebble rolling around in his head. Uh, somebody was, posted. You have to look at the intent, too, yeah. of what he was saying. Further, I mean, I didn't hear what the question was, but apparently, the uh, the Hollywood uh, reporter 
person and I didn't watch the clip either. I'm just I, I would assume that they asked something about a comparison to uh Chadwick. Yeah, so you're going in as ignorant as possible on this story, having not watched the video or done anything. Yes, because I mean it, it outlines it here pretty well and it's a quote. So you know, the point where it says, I'm very grateful that you made that comparison and I'm hoping that I can live up to it. Like some people were saying, oh, he just turned it, turned Chadwick Boseman's death into uh, promotional into, or something. No, into uh, like a plug for himself. Yeah. Uh, Shang-Chi may be one of the best MCU movies, but you got a little too much dip on your chip. You don't have the limited filmography that Chadwick Boseman had. Uh, there's just, there's so many more. Just let and the then, guy be happy he's in a fucking movie. Like, yeah. So this is, I just, I wanted to touch on this because it's, I mean, it's less of a, it's less of a entertainment story and more of a like society for fuck's sake, quit being so goddamn stupid about everything. Yeah, uh, you one, haven't entertained me at all with this story. You've made me angry. <laughs> one commenter clapped back, uh, the replies, y'all not going to act like Shang-Chi and the MCU adaptation of Namor aren't a direct result of the success of Chadwick as and in Black Panther. Seymour's response was very genuine and full of gratitude. Y'all just like to be mad about something. Yeah, so, that, and, and I that, would agree with that. Yeah, that's. It's just. I don't understand this new per, per, propension. Is that the word that I'm looking for? Propensity. Propensity. Uh, like, I mean, it's not new, but it just seems so much more. And maybe it's just because um, these are the news stories that tend to pop up because we tend to cover entertainment news. But I just get so dumbfounded at why people think they even have the right to nitpick something so benign. Like, why turn it into this, like, thing? Yeah. Uh, it goes on to say, like, it, this isn't his first time being in hot water. Um, something about a long-deleted... Uh, Reddit post um, where he was uh, being criticized for comments in which he compared pedophiles to gay people and being gay to having a mutation, um, which is comments that were never actually substantiated by Cebu and were only ever tied to him because the writer of the post claimed to be a Canadian actor. God. So there's no, there's even no proof. But of course, people just go and they try and dig up this stuff to to villainize somebody, and I just don't understand why. Racism, Especially, my friend. Be, that's yes, what it is. because of racism. Like, and it's, I I don't get it, man. I don't. Yeah, I, mean, so, I really uh, don't understand it either. There there were several of these of these commenters who were African American who were who were speaking up against him um and it's just like that that wasn't the intent and you know it wasn't and i don't understand why you think you have to make it that way yeah like what do you gain by being that kind of a shitty person when it's very obvious that he was very grateful to chadwick's prominence in the mcu and uh, his contribution and how it paved the way for more um, more actors of of color and and of different race. Yeah, it's just fucking let let him appreciate Chadwick's legacy <laughs> because that's what he was doing. And yeah, I don't know. I'm right there with you. It just seems dumb. Like I get it. I'm a white dude. I don't have the life background to really understand if that is offensive or not. But regardless, I can still tell 
that he was not trying to be offensive. Even if you were to yeah. take it as offensive, that's that was not his intention. Yeah. If you're taking offense to that, then you are intentionally being a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, you're just looking for something to be pissed off about. So anybody who uh, was pissed off about that has become the fuck shit of the week. All right. The quadruple fuck shit of the week. An yep. infinite fuck shit of the week. An infinite fuck shit of the week because the Internet is infinite with with and, assholes. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of assholes on the Internet. I've checked. Yeah. Mm hmm. So that was my first one, Brandon. How about you? Uh, AI generated artwork is copyrighted for the first time. Oh, there was a designer and artificial intelligence enthusiast named Chris Kashtanova who posted on his Instagram account. I got a copyright from the Copyright Office of the USA on my AI generated graphic novel. I was open how it was made and put Mid Journey, which is a uh, AI, on the cover page. It wasn't altered in any other way. Kashtanova writes. I tried to make a case that we do own copyright when we make something using AI. I registered it as visual arts work. My certificate is in the mail, and I got the number and a confirmation today that it was approved. My friend lawyer gave me this idea, and I decided to make a precedent. So, so it's copywritten to him or to the AI? Yes, to him. Okay. So I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this, because looking at the uh, article I posted in our Big Heads Remington, um, you can see a little bit of the artwork. Uh -huh. But what he did is with Mid Journey, you have to, it's a lot easier to do a person if you put in a famous person. Uh huh. It's because then it has a bunch of pictures of reference of that person's face to put them in different positions and things. Yeah. Well, he used the actress Zendaya, if you know who she is. Yeah. Yeah, he used her. So the entire comic book looks like it is starring Zendaya. Also, I just I don't like the fact that somebody has already tried to corporatize AI art generation. I mean, how long has AI art generation been around, been as prevalent as it is now? You know, it's just now starting to take off and people are already trying to, like, copyright it and shit. I mean, that's just that's the natural progression of it. No, I know. It just happened way faster than it seems like it normally does. Well, that's because the technology is coming along faster than pretty much any technology in the past 50, 100 years. I mean, AI seems to be growing by leaps and bounds, and it's only been a year or two that it's really like hit this point of like, boom, now it's like it was here for a long time and now it's just boom. Um, and I think that, uh, I think the, the corporatization of it is just the, the, it was an inevitability. Uh, I am more interested in AI having their own quote unquote rights for yeah, which is something we've things, discussed before, which is, is definitely something we've talked about. Um, the idea of an AI doing the work off of prompts, uh, I would call more a collaboration than anything. So okay. I feel I feel like. It would be like having two writers on a book. And one is is providing, you know, the the bare bones of the storyline, the other one's kind of fleshing it out. And then there's some there's some talk in between, which I'm sure that if the AI output a script, then he went over it and did any corrections that he wanted to do to make a cohesive story, because it's not going to be a hundred percent cohesive story out of an AI. That's just, it's not something that happens yet. Yeah. Well, I think, and I don't know a hundred percent, but I've read a couple different articles, although this story is not a new story. This story's from September. Yeah. So, but I've read a couple articles and I believe that he did write a script and then put in the prompts to create the artwork afterwards. Mm -hmm. So 
And I mean, if that's... If that's a way to get a story out for somebody who's a, a writer who wants to do a graphic novel or a, or a comic book or something like that, and they don't have uh, access to a an artist, I don't want to say that everybody should be doing it because they shouldn't. Um, but if it's something that you have that you've been sitting on and you just haven't found somebody to bite on it or haven't had the money to pay an artist for it and you just go in and finally get your story out because AI is available to you? Uh, or, or even more, it sounds kind of like he did this one as an experiment to see if he could. I think that's what the case is, yes. I don't know. I mean... I think that I would I would wager to say that he knows the importance of actually hiring a person to do this sort of thing. Um you know to continue having people having jobs and all of that sort of thing. I think AI has a place uh in, you know, business or or creation of things to uh monetize and it most certainly will affect jobs in some way, shape, or form, but it's not going to take over. And Specifically, are you talking about AI as a whole or about this kind of art generation? AI, AI as a whole. AI as a whole, and even to a lesser extent, AI art generation for the profit uh, or for the, for the creation of profitable material, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, It's it's a really rough road to walk down. It's mentally, you know. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of questions about it. I still have, and that's when I said I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, I genuinely mean that, you know, because there's that part of the bell in my head that's like, this is bad. This sets a weird precedent. But then at the same yeah. time, as you were talking, it does make sense. Like if you've written a script but you can't find an artist, and suddenly there's this new medium available to you. Why shouldn't you be able to copyright it? Yeah. So I don't see enough pluses or minuses on either side to really be able to say for sure. I just yeah. kind of wanted to put this story out here to get your opinion on it. It's I mean, it's an inter uh, It's an interesting one for sure. My mic went quiet again. <laughs> yeah, you're still quiet. Check. There we go. You're good now. It's a uh, it. It's definitely an interesting um, conundrum because as somebody who has written before and wanted to do comics at, at one point in my life, um, it's really intriguing to me to be able to just say, OK, I want this and I want it to look like this. And um, even to the point of like there was there was at one point where we were taking a script and I was rewriting it in a fashion that made more sense to somebody who was then going to draw it. So kind of laying out the scenes that like played well. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the person who had the actual movie script of it was like, Oh, I, I really like, you know, the, the way that you've set up the scene. It's very cinematic. And I was like, you know, that that sort of thing. Now I could just make those modifications to the script. And then instead of, um, you know, having an artist who, you know, was going to work on it and then fell through or whatever happens. Now I can just make it a reality for both me and the uh, the person who wrote the script. Yeah, and I can see using that as an aid, you know, to. Yeah. Or even or again, even generating the stuff and then having an artist, you know, almost using it as a. Um, oh, God, what are those called? A pre uh, The only word that's coming to mind is springboard. Like a previs. Where you've. Know. 
where you've drawn where you've like drawn up what you want the scene to look like in in just quick sketches i don't know what it's called but i know what you're talking about it, yeah in film in film a lot of people call it a previs if i remember right uh but i can't remember um it's something bored um fuck that's gonna drive me nuts i'll think of it like 20 minutes from now and be like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Okay, well, I'll go ahead and go into my second story because it's related to the first one, if that's okay with you. Yeah, go for it. Uh, This is from The Verge. The title is Getty Images CEO says firms racing to sell AI art could be stepping into illegal territory. Uh, Getty Images CEO Craig Peters has criticized companies racing to commercialize AI art generators, saying firms aren't thinking through the potential legal and ethical hazards of the technology. So Getty Images banned selling AI content in September, AI generated art in September. Um, basically what he's saying is that other companies are, have not banned AI art, other stock image companies. Yeah. And it could potentially be a whole world of legal trouble later on when you start to question like, okay, well, who generated this image? Yeah. I think as far as that goes, I think the person or people who are creating the images have a. um, I had the word and then I lost it. Have a. uh, Penis. (laughs) <laughs> yes have a penis and some don't and some mm-hmm. did at one point but don't now and vice versa um <laughs> oh my god fucking brandon why do i think of words and then forget them oh wait it's I because have i pee. have undiagnosed give, give adhd all right go <laughs> i'll be pee. right back i'm sorry all right i'm gonna pause it All right, welcome back, Brandon. Thank you. Did you have a good pee? I did have a good pee. I felt good. As I was sitting, I could feel the pressure like right below my gut and was like, uh oh, I'm not going to make it. (laughs) So I I remembered the word that I wanted, which was responsibility. (laughs) Perfect. So to our viewers and or listeners, it's like no time has passed and I suddenly remembered things and I'm a genius. <laughs> and unless you call out that you had forgotten the word and then learned it as you just did. Shut up and fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> mm, he truly is a genius. <laughs> so I, th- I, I feel like the people who are creating this have a moral responsibility to do it in a way that's not stepping on or not utilizing like the fellow who used Zendaya's image um really I would have not done it I could have said maybe somebody who kind of resembles Zendaya just to get a completely new face but has some of her features some something to differentiate it enough that it's not Zendaya and the yeah. reason is, is because an actor, an actress, uh, their brand is them. So utilizing their face is basically like stealing a brand. Yeah, well, and the argument with this Getty Images guy is that this AI to get the pictures goes over you know, millions of pictures that are on the internet and cross references mm-hmm. them. And that's how it puts this up, including using Getty images and other stock image sites, pictures oh. to help create their images. Almost like an artist goes through different pictures across the internet to like really nail down a pose that they're trying to get a character to stand in based on yeah. like body type and and uh positioning and you know how the how the muscles are are formulating the curvature of the arm as they're putting their cheek against their fist you know it's not doing anything else that a human brain isn't doing except for the fact that it just has to cross cross reference this stuff on the fly instead of just using memory 
like a human does. And even okay. still, a human is going out and and referencing these materials to try and nail it down. So the Getty Images guy is wrong in that respect. There's, yeah, fuck him. The, the, I, there's just no question to me that he is just wrong in that regard. I think that because we as humans mimic things that we have experienced in some way, shape, or form, it's like the idea that there's no original ideas anymore. And that's because we as a species have existed for so long and our tiny monkey brains just don't have that many crazier ideas. We build off of things that we have enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing. That's what the AI is doing just in a much faster scale. You're giving an awful lot of humanity to an AI, though. I'm giving I don't want to say that I'm giving humanity to it because I don't feel like I'm giving any humanity to it, because, like I said, it is still just cross referencing a bunch of image. Uh, cro oh, my God, words cross referencing a bunch of imagery. Yes. But based on prompts, based on prompts that somebody physically put in. Um. I don't feel like that's giving any kind of humanity to it. That's calculation. That's, you know, that's data processing. Just because I liken it to the same data processing that humans do. I mean, fuck, scientists are kind of thinking that the human brain is a, is a quantum computer in, its, uh, in and of its own. That's another article that I was reading that I didn't think was good enough to bring to the podcast. Mm hmm. But they're just like, yeah, I mean, the way that everything seems to fire in the brain is so much like a quantum computer. Maybe our brains are just a fucking quantum computer. And then if they can create a quantum computer, they've created life. They've bested God. Yeah. Which. That kind of comes down to whether or not you believe a soul is a real thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Did Frankenstein I, have a soul? I say yes. Uh, if Frankenstein was cognizant, I suppose, but does cognizance mean that you have a soul, if a soul is even a thing? Yeah, I'd say so. Just like those um, mollusks that were granted not citizenship in Britain, but <laughs> were considered intelligent species. Yeah. They have souls. Lobsters have souls. That's where I'm settling. <laughs> That's the official dueling ogre's opinion is lobsters have souls. Uh, well, then I will continue to eat them and pray for them. <laughs> <laughs> How many lobsters did you eat on your cruise? None. No lobster? No lobsters. You know why? Because they're sentient beings and I refuse <laughs> to eat another sentient being. I'm pretty sure when we had this discussion, you came down on the side of fuck lobsters. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> but no, I didn't have any <laughs> lobster. Um, I had a good amount of pizza. You went and, on a cruise and had pizza? So there, there's, there's free food. There are restaurants that have free food um, that are, that's all wrapped up into your cost. Then there are other restaurants that you have to pay for. And those restaurants are like 30 bucks a person. Jesus. On average. Yeah. So it, it's like, hmm, do I spend 30 bucks on myself? just to have something to poop out later or do i just eat the fuck out of all the free food <laughs> i can tell you i i ate more food on that to the point where like i came back and i'm i've been trying to get back into the eating uh healthier and stuff sort of thing yeah but my stomach was stretched out so like i had to eat more in order to fill up <laughs> but not so much that like I was continuing to leave my stomach stretched in the in the positions that it was. Yeah, so that, that's been a C fun pizza. journey. Yeah. Uh, and like, oh, God, uh, not to get too far back on it, but the meals were just uh, there. There was like a sit down dining thing, sit down dinner every evening that was in this beautiful uh, th three tiered um, fucking dining hall i'll have to show you a couple of pictures of that because it was phenomenal maybe that's the maybe that's that might have been the place where i said holy shit because there was all of these people on the cruise 
eating their like first night's dinner there. I think that's where mm-hmm. I went. Holy shit. Cause I walked through and I just saw that there was just tables and tables across three. It was the most, uh, the, the big, the place that I have seen the most people just sitting down and having a meal before. Like it was amazing. Like a giant sea cafeteria. Yeah. Only it had more of a fine dining restaurant vibe and you had a waiter. Mm-hmm. Actually, you had two waiters. What does the second waiter do? The uh, second waiter tends to some of the smaller things or helps the uh, other waiter. So like refilling drinks. Uh, the first waiter takes your order, brings out the food. Um, it had all of the silverware. Like you have three forks on the left and three spoons and a fucking knife and all of that. And like the main waiter would come along and like, clear out the dishes and take the forks for the next, you know, for take the appetizer forks away when the, uh, when the main course came up and then would take the main course forks away when dessert was served. Like it was just, I'm not going to lie, Brandon. It was the fanciest I've done ever seen. It was fancy as shit. It was fancy as shit. But yeah, it was, it was a really cool experience. Yeah. That particular one. Um, so I'm sorry, that was a little bit more of a segue than I was intending. Uh, going back to it, like, I just think that, uh, once you bring somebody's likeness in, especially an actor, an actress, uh, a social media influencer, uh, a model, uh, a, a fucking bodybuilder, you know, every, uh, when, when a person is using either their personality uh, or their looks as their brand. The people who are using AI to create art need to have a moral responsibility to not step on that brand presence. So you're protecting the rich and powerful is what I'm hearing. Yeah. But no, I get what you're saying, and I totally agree. Um, I do want to say now, though, that anybody who wants to use my likeness for a comic book is more than welcome to. All right. It is now in uh, recording. So if anybody profits substantially off of using Brandon's likeness, uh, there is nothing he can do about it because he just released it for free. You can't use my personality, though. You can just use my physical likeness. Yeah. They so can't if... be a neurotic whiner like I. <laughs> I was just I was going to let you I was just going to let you shit on yourself instead of me taking advantage of it. I figured, yeah, I thought you were going to let me hang there. <laughs> All right. So uh, new or old, Brandon, new or old? Old. Ancient creatures are emerging from the cold storage of melting permafrost, almost like something out of a horror movie. From incredibly preserved extinct megafauna like the woolly rhino to the 40,000-year-old remains of a giant wolf and bacteria over 750,000 years old. Not all of these things are dead. So this is from Science Alert. Um, Ancient 15,000-year-old viruses found in melting Tibetan glaciers. All right, I'm reading along with you. I've got the article pulled up as well. All right. Centuries old moss was able to spring back to life in the warmth of the laboratory. So, too, incredibly, were tiny 42,000 year old roundworms. These fascinating glimpses of organisms from Earth's long distant past are revealing the history of ancient ecosystems, including the details of the environments in which they existed. But the melt has also created some concerns about ancient viruses coming back to haunt us. Quote, melting will not only lead to the loss of those ancient archived microbes and viruses, but also release them to the environments in the future, researchers explained in a study last year led by first author and microbiologist Ji Ping Zhong from Ohio State University. Hey, Sorry that's right pronoun- in our neck of the woods. It is. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Ji Ping? Thanks to metagen- metagenomics techniques, and new methods for keeping their ice core samples sterilized, the researchers were able to get a better understanding 
of what exactly lies within the coal. In the study, the team was able to identify an archive of dozens of unique 15,000-year-old viruses from the Gulia ice cap of the Tibetan Plateau and gain insights into their functions. Quote, these glaciers were formed gradually, and along with dust and gases, many, many viruses were also deposited in that ice, said Jean. These microbes potentially represent those in the atmosphere at the time of their deposit, the team explained in their paper. So we're fucked, is what all this boils down to. So, as the ice caps melt, as the glaciers melt, they're going to release all kinds of crazy new bacteria that's been frozen. Yep. And then we'll all do, it'll be a massive extinction. All because I mean, humans that's not off the table. Keep, all because humans couldn't reel in their, their greenhouse gases. Damn you, humans. Ah, why do, so I'm, why do I'm cars the, have to be so great? <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm one of the people that, like, I am aware that the Earth goes through cycles of warm and cold spots like this is something that is scientifically proven i am also aware that the presence of humans especially during the industrial age uh specifically you can see a huge spike of data that suggests scientifically that that spike in greenhouse gases caused by industrial revolution and its continuing uh impact uh made did my mic go low again uh a little but i can still hear you okay made the earth speed up in this in this warming thing that we're kind of going through yeah um Fucking just in my lifetime, like I'm a Christmas baby for those of you who didn't realize it. And one of the only things that I ever really want for Christmas is snow. Like that's really all that I want for Christmas is just snow. Yeah. Make it a nice white Christmas. Yep. Um, That just it makes me happy. It makes my heart warm. Uh, It's not something that's happened a lot in the past. God, 10 years almost. No, not at yeah. all. We had uh, we had one good blizzard, but hell, even most of that was uh, in February, I think, a couple mm-hmm. years back, right before COVID. I think it was the year before COVID. I think um, so, yeah. So the idea, the long, the long or the shortened version of this is the idea that, you know, this this melting of the ice caps and these uh, places that are higher up that uh, have been encased in snow for thousands and thousands of years. And the fact that they are melting now and releasing this stuff. Yeah, we can totally have a rise of more pandemics um, if the if these viruses and bacteria are able to affect human beings in a uh, negative fashion. And yeah, and I mean, it just takes one outbreak at a science lab with some weird ringworm from 750,000 years ago, and suddenly you've got another COVID. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's fascinating. And, and it doesn't even have to be something that they were, you know, just pulling from a lab. You know, it could just be it melts and the conditions are right, and this thing springs back to life, and, and a hiker picks it up and then spreads it. Yeah. So, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't uh, AIDS originally from monkeys? I believe so. Although I don't know if that's propaganda or if that's actually true. Yeah. But uh, it's, to it's the best of my something... knowledge, I think it's true, yes. Yeah. It's definitely something that we were taught at one point. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't remember the, uh, the truth of it all, but that's what we're going with, at least based on memory for the moment. And if we're wrong, Thanks, please, c- please correct us. And fuck you, monkeys. No, that's <laughs> You're fine. the new fuck shit of the week, monkeys. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. It's, it's interesting, though. I always like this kind of microbiology stuff and finding stuff of the past that... Um, seeing the different structures that existed during a different time period in our, in our, in our world and how, how things were literally, quite literally built different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, really, it's really neat to me. So that's why I kind of grabbed some of these, like, um, 
these biology stories. I never really wanted to be a biologist, but there are most certainly things about biology that fascinate me. And this is kind of one of them. Ancient viruses? Just ancient things being found and, and exploring what that means. That makes me think, and I can't remember if I brought it as a story or not, so tell me if I did in one of our past episodes. Okay. But there's scientists who are trying to bring back ancient smells. I don't remember if we talked about that or not. Yeah, well, I don't have an article up or anything, but I was reading an article about a scientist, a group of scientists who are getting like old earthenware pots from uh, Pompeii uh -huh. and are trying to scrape what's inside of it along with the history of what kind of plants would grow in the area to yeah. reproduce the smells so you can like pump them through museums and stuff. This sounds familiar. I feel yeah, like we maybe may have we talked did. about it before, but I think it's a pretty cool idea. So thumbs up yeah. to ancient smells, thumbs yeah. down to ancient biology or ancient, ancient bacteria, not biology. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't, don't kill us viruses. Yeah. <laughs> do you have another one? I do. I have one more. Cool. I have uh, one more too. Do yours. Cause I accidentally closed mine. It's going to take me a minute to find mine. Didn't you link it in the uh, thing? That I did, donkey. <laughs> gotcha. All right. The company Atlas, who is a game company, is suing fans for reviving its long dead MMO. Where's the MMO? The MMO Shin Megami Tensei Imagine Online Ooh. shut down its servers in 2016 with the reviewed with the revived fan server cropping up sometime in late 2020. Yeah. A website that Atlas says is a blatant copy of the original Imagine website was also allegedly operated by Rick Rekuimu, who was one of the uh, people being sued. The website seems to be a major pushing point for Atlas, with the suit claiming Rekuimu falsely added its own copyright information alongside the ones for Atlas, Sega, and co-developer Cave Interactive. The suit was originally filed back in December of 2021, but has now reached the point where both Rikumi and Comp Hack are being summoned to appear in court. The suit claims the fan server has caused and will continue to cause irreparable damage to Atlas unless restrained by this court, despite the servers being dead for over six years. The developer is seeking statutory damages of up to $25,000 per violation of the DMCA, plus monetary relief, including damages sustained by Atlas in an amount not yet determined. Huh. So the long and short of it is this company had an MMO. They shut down the MMO server so you could no yeah. longer play it. And then a fan server came up and started to run, and Atlas is now suing them for a shit ton of money yeah. for money lost, even though they didn't lose any money because their servers had already been shut down. Right. Uh, as far as this goes, this is kind of one of those, like, it's almost like, the, and this, this is a little bit different too, but, uh, there used to be World of Warcraft servers that people would run, um, privately. Yeah. I remember the original WoW was on its own fan server before they decided to re-release it officially. Yeah, and uh, it's, and even then, I mean, there were there were private servers for a long time, and it, I played on them, um, and then finally Blizzard was like, "Yeah, this is kind of cutting into our revenue," um, and this is before Activision bought them, and I'll, it, they caught a lot of heat, you know, uh, about shutting these things down. But it it's their IP, and now, mind you, World of Warcraft was still playable on their servers and is still a game that exists isn't something that's been shut down um so their stance for like putting a kibosh to that sort of thing makes a little more sense um oh absolutely i still don't agree with it um I don't know. I'm of a weird point. And again, I've said this 30 times this episode, but I know we've talked about this before. I say wagging my finger, but I love the idea of keeping old games playable yeah. as a part of history. I love the history of gaming. I think it's important. It's important to me specifically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you're trying to maintain these servers and play a game where you're not losing any money, Atlas... 
I don't know, maybe they are losing money somewhere, but they're not losing $25,000 per DMCA violation right. for this game for people to play. Yeah. I, th- it's this just is... aggressively protecting their IP, which I understand you have to do in a world sometimes. You have to aggressively protect your IPs, but I don't but, know. It just seems shitty. So here's, here's my stance for it. I think, do they have a leg to stand on because it's their IP? Yes. Do I agree with the way that they're going about it? Absolutely not. It's a game that's dead. So if the servers are, did did they say that the servers were free? Like you could play it for free? No, they took the servers down completely. Oh, the um, the fan one? Yeah. I would be very surprised if they were charging for it. It didn't say, but um, I think most of the fan games like this are free. Although yeah. that would make a big difference to me if they were charging for it. I could see why they would sue if it was free. This, it seems egregious. Exactly. So let's go under the ins- the assumption that they were hosting these servers for free and allowing people to do to play the game. Uh, Atlas shut down their servers because it was not cost effective to have it do it or to to have them up anymore uh, or to make room for new technology and new games or what have you. Uh, I don't know much about Atlas, the company themselves. What else do they have? Are they still in business as a gaming company? I don't think I've ever heard of them. I've heard of them, definitely. Um, Let me look them up real fast. Okay. Uh, Yeah, they've made the Persona games, which Uh, are insanely popular. Yeah, wildly popular, yeah. Persona, Catherine Full Body, Etrian Odyssey Nexus. Catherine was a good one. Okay, so Atlas is a pretty well respected game company as far as the games they've released, anyway. Yeah, I didn't know what, uh, I didn't know who created Persona 5, but uh, yeah. Um, like you said, they are wildly popular uh, games. And really cool. Honestly, I've watched a couple people play and I'm just like, oh, that's a fucking neat game. I want to play that. <laughs> yeah, I have Persona 5 downloaded on my Xbox right now with Game Pass. I haven't uh, fired up yet, but I've heard it's really good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so going going back to the story. If they're, if they're having these servers out for free and Atlas is no longer supporting playing it on their servers. I feel like they should at least have gotten a hold of the people who are hosting these servers and given them a cease and desist, but opened a dialogue on allowing them to do these games. Say, yeah, get their numbers. See how many people have been playing. Yeah. And even not even that, like, um, have that dialogue where it's like, okay, so we've got this DMCA, um, we've got this cease and desist here, but you're hosting these servers, you're uh, you're increasing interest in our company, and you're providing all of this for free. The moment that you start charging or doing microtransactions or anything for this, we're gonna come after you with the big spike club. But yeah. un- until then, as long as you keep everything free, allow it to exist. Allow people to play. Allow people to say, oh, this was created by Atlas. Let's see what other games they have. Let's, you know, allow that to be a stepping point for new customers to come in and buy games from you because they liked this free thing that they played on a private server. It's a good way to get people like you're saying it's a good way to get people into your ip into your products yeah and if if the uh if the if the love of it is there then fucking make a new game and then release it on your own servers and bring the mmo back yeah new and improved all shiny and new now featuring stuff like that yeah so i mean there's no real reason uh, I, I mean, like, I, 
if it's free, there's no real reason to stop people from operating these private servers and letting people play these games. Aside exactly. from aside from protecting the IP that you're not even fucking using. Well, they are using Shin Megami Tensei. They're still making oh, okay. those games. Okay, but, but they not, haven't made the MMO. Yeah, so these are these are like standalone games that aren't MMOs. Yes. So it's I mean even still it's like It's like writing a fanfic. Like a operating a, an MMO server of a defunct game is like writing a fanfic about uh about an actor that or or a personality or a genre or a a property that you have released for free it almost falls under parody laws you know because it's not something that's real or realistic or i don't know there's still the argument for even writing a fanfic using personalities and stuff but cuz that kind of that kind of straddles the line that i have for uh using uh, a person's image in um ai art okay so it kind of straddles that line but in writing like writing a fanfic i feel like is a little bit different it's kind of an homage because somebody's putting their own thought and feel and spin into it Whereas to a, to a higher degree when they write an actual fanfic, um, with the, with the AI thing, I feel like just having a, a short prompt about what you want to see and then utilizing somebody's image, that's, that's bad. But okay. like. But saying, you know, in your fanfic or like a fanfic about Markiplier, just as a for instance, because I know that those exist. I have never read one. I have written a couple myself, but I've never read anybody else's because I don't want to tarnish my view of that sweet half Korean's body in my brain. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But. Writing writing a fanfic is kind of like an homage to that person in in a <laughs> I want to say in a pure way, even though they can be very unpure. Oh, yes. <laughs> but um, so to me, it's it's a little different. And maybe and maybe that's just my my own personal opinion on it. Um, I lost where I was going. I rambled too hard right there. I'm sorry. Well, you were making good points, though. You weren't rambling unnoticed. Your points. Oh, so, so yeah. Going back to it, I think I think that Atlas should take advantage of this and put up put a positive view on it and say, you know, hey, as long as you're not making money, please, by all means. You have the rights. Give them the rights to utilize these uh, these things because it takes a lot of money to run a server. And if somebody's putting their own money into it and is only gaining money by ads on a website for it, you know, that's that's indirect income that isn't pertaining to buying access to the game or access to items in the game like via microtransactions or expansions um to to increase the the gameplay like passive money from ads it doesn't really factor into it and it helps to mitigate the cost of running the server that i can almost assure you that the ads aren't paying for entirely yeah, and I mean, I could say, too, from my opinion, that if they are making money off of this, then absolutely go after them. Yeah. Because that's a fucked up way to to use somebody else's IP, is to just use their code in their game, make your own servers, and then charge for cosmetics and stuff. Yeah. 
So our both of our arguments hinge on the idea that they are not making money off of this. Yes. All right. So I think that one's good, right? Yep. All right. Uh, final one. Princeton physicists discover exotic quantum state at room temperature. And that's that's the kicker right there is the room temperature part. OK. For first time, physicists have observed novel quantum effects in a topological insulator at room temperature. How'd you like all them words? Those are a lot of good words. <laughs> Researchers at Princeton University discovered that a material known as a topological insulator made from the elements bismuth and bromine exhibits specialized quantum behaviors normally seen only under extreme experimental conditions of high pressures and temperatures near absolute zero. The findings open up a new range of possibilities for the development of efficient quantum technologies such as spin-based high energy efficiency electronics. So that's the that's the practical application is high energy efficient electronics. Okay, cuz I was wondering what the practical application was going to be of yeah, this. Yeah, some sometimes I bring these science stories and they don't have any practical application and you just you're just like, I don't know why you brought this. <laughs> <laughs> why well, don't say it like that? No, you, but... you don't say it at all. I just, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, oh, this is a really neat story. This is really fascinating to me. And Brandon's like, I don't understand what the fuck you're saying. I don't have any interest in this particular thing. And you're not giving me any reason to care about it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's all fair. That's all it fair. is. It's 100% all fair. And I <laughs> completely agree with that sentiment that you have never said to my face. <laughs> uh, physicists have observed novel quantum effects in a topological insulator at room temperature for the first time. This breakthrough came when scientists from Princeton University explored a topological material based on the element bismuth. The study was published as the cover article of the October issue of the journal Nature Materials. While scientists have used topological insulators to demonstrate quantum effects for more than a decade, this experiment is the first time these effects have been observed at room temperature. Including and observing quantum states in topological insulators typically require or inducing, sorry, inducing and observing quantum states in topological insulators typically requires temperatures around absolute zero, which is equal to minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 273 degrees Celsius. This finding opens up a new range of possibilities for the development of efficient quantum technologies, such as spin-based electronics, which have the potential to replace many current electronic systems with substantially higher energy efficiency. In recent years, the study of topological states of matter has attracted considerable attention among scientists physicists and engineers in fact it present it is presently the focus of much international interest and in research this area of study combines quantum physics with topology a branch of theoretical mathematics that explores geometric properties that can be deformed but not intrinsically changed quote the novel topological properties of matter have emerged as one of the most sought after treasures in modern physics, both from a fundamental physics point of view and for finding potential applications in next generation quantum engineering and nanotechnologies, said M. Zahid Hassan, the, the Eugene Higgins professor of physics at Princeton University. I like how that's the part that I struggled on. The Eugene Higgins Yeah, I was, was going to make a joke about that too. <laughs> <laughs> Who led the research. This work was enabled by multiple innovative uh, experimental advances in our lab at Princeton. So, of course, this article also goes on for several things, but that's really exciting. Um, I... Along with this one, I, I keep forgetting to make. So when I do these, when I record these, I try to make like myself bigger when I'm bringing the story and you bigger when you're bringing the story. But as soon as I start talking for mine, I forget to make myself big. Anyway. Yeah. Um, man, my ADHD is it. showing hard today. <laughs> <laughs> d and is going to be fun here in uh, 16 minutes ago. <laughs> Well, D and D was canceled. I'll tell you on air. Bucky can't make it either. So. Oh, can he not? Okay, cool. Really? Yeah, he messaged me while we uh, were recording. Message you privately. He was sick. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, well, and let's uh, at. 
Zoe I messaged Sin. Ethan, but I don't oh, know if you? he'll see it. Okay. I messaged well, him on Facebook. Message. Okay, fair enough. Um, so anyway, I love the idea. Uh, I was just reading an article that kind of pertained to this about uh, quantum watches. So watches still count seconds when they're when they're tabulating time. Uh, quantum watches do not. So okay. quantum quantum time pieces don't have to count seconds, which makes them far more accurate. Because if uh, if a clock, if a watch is counting the seconds, then external forces can change the outcome of how long a second is. So uh, having an increase in quantum-based technologies um, with higher energy efficiencies as well as, you know, even better timekeeping. Like, you can have a watch that now is so accurate in time that um, experiments become better. Um, just general, like, it's never going to keep me from being late to work. <laughs> Yeah. But at least, but at least if I arrive, if I'm supposed to be there at 11 and I arrive at uh, 10, 59 and 23 seconds, and that is backed up by my quantum watch, <laughs> then when my boss says, damn it, Remington, quit being late, I can say, um, actually put pushes up invisible glasses. I am not late. I am here at 10, 59 and 53 seconds. Buy my quantum watch, which is more accurate than anything that you have here. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just shove that quantum physics right in his face. Yep. Her face. Her face. Yeah. Well, you did it. You did a boss voice like, damn it, Remington. I know, but that's how all bosses sound. Yeah. In your head. They're like yep. the parents from Peanuts, only more angry. Yep. Or uh, um, the, the head editor for um, Spider-Man. J. Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson. Jameson. Yeah. yeah. It finally came to me. God, I struggled. Damn it, through. Remington. Get me shipments of Spider Man. <laughs> get me shipments of Quantum Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> Quantum Spider Man. Is he there? Is he not? Who knows? <laughs> he exists in two places at once. <laughs> Is he strong? Maybe so. <laughs> he is both strong and not strong at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Look uh, out. Here may become Spider Man. So, yeah, uh, all of these links, of course, will be. I mean, do you care at all for like the ideas of this? <laughs> I guess I, I didn't get your opinion. <laughs> I just don't understand what it means. Yeah, I guess. And that's what it comes down to with a lot of your stories about quantum stuff is I think it's interesting and I think the idea is interesting. I just my brain wants to turn it, like you said, into something practical. My brain wants to be mm -hmm. like, OK, but what does this mean exactly? Yeah. And I, I 100 percent get that. There's sometimes where I read these articles and I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Not saying that I'm any kind of like fucking quantum physics genius. It's just I, I certainly don't understand any of the mathematical equations that are behind any of them. So I just I just love. Um, I guess I would say what excites me the most about these these kind of. Um, these kind of nebulous quantum theories and applications that are nebulous to me, but not to people who are quantum physicists um, is, is the practical, practical application. But I also realize that even if they don't list a practical application, there will be one down the road more than likely for whatever I'm reading about. So oh, yeah, even, absolutely. Even so just for me, just because I can't imagine what that could be uh, doesn't mean that I'm not excited about it. So um, and, and that I want to share that because that's that's how I operate is like if if I get excited about something, I want to share that with somebody. So that's 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 why some of those stories come in for me that just have don't have that practical application. Yeah, no reason to apologize or explain. We all know where you're coming from. I you hope so. Shit. Oh, 
build me up and then break me down. That's what I love about you, Brandon. Yeah. Rebuild you in my own image. Like Jesus. Yeah. Like Jesus. So if you have any questions or comments or you'd like to hear yourself on air, you can call us at 978-DU-OGRES. That's 978-386-4737. The last person to do that was the Diamond Man, Stephen Hines. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It was. So uh, you all should do that. You can even send a text message. You don't have to. I'll read your text on air, too. He'll do it. I will. I swear to God, I will. You can also reach us on Twitter at Dueling Ogres. Email, although fucking stay off of Twitter. Like yeah. all of them are toxic, but Jesus Christ. I, I, I feel like I spend more time on Twitter than I do Facebook, which actually I know I do. Um, really? And not on not on purpose either. It's not like I'm just looking at Twitter. Um, but I have I have three accounts that I manage on Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Lurk Squad, the Dueling Ogres and you. Yep. And my personal one. And different you know it, it's got an algorithm just like anything else and i have three different algorithms that sends me random notifications because you know i've clicked once or twice on something that i was like oh i kind of want to know about that and now it sends me all this other shit so that's that's the uh sometimes it's not stuff that i give a shit about like um oddly enough the dueling ogres one gives me a lot more political stuff Oh, really? Than, than I care about. <laughs> yeah. Huh. That is weird. Yeah. And I think that. Um, I think that's just because. Every once in a while, there will be a story that comes up. That, you know, even though we try to stay unpolitical, it's something that we have talked about. Mm-hmm. Or that that we are going to talk about. And it just happens to be that since since we were going to talk about it on Dueling Ogres, that that's where I got some of the information was Twitter or that's where I found the link to the story, you know? Yeah. Um, the Lurk Squad one has a lot of people who are streaming, obviously, because that's what it was all about. And uh, my own personal one has a lot of big titty goth girls. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're doing what you should. You're doing the Lord's work. I'm I'm living I'm living my life, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so, did we have any uh, comments on the Facebook page? Um, we had a comment from the Viscount Terry W. Irvin the second. I believe I didn't find it because our Facebook has so many past episodes now and we recorded so long ago. But I know that he did, and I also want to do a special shout out to Terry to Viscount Terry W. Irvin the second because. He likes you've been sending out our old episodes on Facebook and Twitter again. Yep. And Instagram. Mm-hmm. He likes every one of those. No matter he does. what. He does. So we appreciate you, Terry. We really do. And we do. sorry, I don't have your comment, but I'm sure it was something very intelligent because they always are. <laughs> Hold on. There was no sarcasm in there. No, there. No, none at all. Um, 224. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Oh shit, that's not that's not our actual thread. Uh Actually, hold on. Okay. Since we're not since we're not doing D&D, I'll just pause it. I'll just pause it everybody. You're going to have another random break cuz I'm not going to edit this shit. Fuck you. <laughs> Brandon? I mean, not the viewers, not our listeners, fuck not me not fuck you guys. Just fuck Brandon. Aww. Somebody fuck Brandon. Just give him a Somebody little Somebody please fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I'm pausing and now it's paused. Okay, so um, Brandon was wrong. What? So it was Stephen Hines that commented on the last episode. I don't think Terry did. If he did, I can't find it. But I did find Stephen's. Uh, I just finally listened to this episode, and your reactions to my stupid voicemail were hilarious. Well played. Threesome invitation accepted. (laughs) (laughs) To which I responded, I bet, as the kids say. Yeah, as the kids say, you do love that one. I do. I bet. <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean that Terry wouldn't have left a uh, comment because he always does. So yeah, he always does. 
he he might have get lo- he might have gotten lost in the shuffle too. <laughs> yeah, and he does have he and Stephen both have new books or relatively new books that came out. Yeah, uh, Terry has. You can search Terry W. Irvin the second on Amazon, and his newest one is called Revived in the Monsters, Maces, and Magic trilogy. Yep. And Stephen Hines has one release called Exiles a Pistol. Epistle, however you pronounce that word. Epistle. Hold on. Uh, epistle. An exile's epistle, which is a letter. It is a noun. Not not okay. like a letter, like a but like a written letter. Epistle. An epistle. Okay. Yes. Epistle. 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 So yeah, we've learned two new out. words today. We have epistle. <laughs> Epistle. Uh, I completely. What, what, what was happening? I'm I'm doing the outro, right? Yeah, you're in the middle of the outro, there, buddy. See, this is what I get for not fucking paying attention to Facebook. I I love you, Stephen. I didn't know that you had released a new book. I need it. Yeah, I own it. I need to leave him an Amazon copy or an Amazon review still, but I bought it. Yeah. I've got it sitting on my bookshelf next to all of his other works. Next to all of the other ones. I'm more of a I'm more of an audiobook person, so of course I, there's there's some things that I should be doing for him <laughs> that I really need to get back to. I actually so uh, he one of his one of his first books was folk uh Hocus Focus, um, which I told him that I would uh, be happy to uh, voice over for him. And uh, it's been several years now, and I have failed him entirely. Uh, but I did, I did find the files the other day, and I, I was listening back to it, and I was like, man, I really want to get back into this again. So um, now I don't want, Stephen, when you listen to this, I don't want you to get too excited. I will make you precisely no promises. Um, I don't want to get you excited and then disappoint you wholeheartedly again, but uh, I definitely want to try to get back into into doing that because, man, do I miss reading shit. (laughs) So uh, thank you for your uh, comment, Stephen. Uh, Thank you, as always, Terry, for just just being you and just liking everything we do. Um, your yeah. tenacity is is well appreciated. Uh, also, I would like to thank all of our patrons who just continue to forget that they have a patronage to us. I love all of you guys. Uh, that includes uh, Jenny, uh, the Diamond Man, Stephen Hines, uh, Mumphrey, Heavy No More, uh, Chad and Bucky. Yeah, it's I don't know why you still give to us, but I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain either. Uh, it definitely helps out. Um, and if anybody else wants to uh, give a little donation, the link will be down in the uh, in the show notes. And uh, you can you, there's you can also you don't have to do a patronage like a constant thing. You can just do a one off. Um, every little bit uh, goes to actually all of it uh, goes to the continuing operation of the website as well as uh, Libsyn, where we house all of our episodes. So, yeah. Thank you all so much. Uh, Make sure to subscribe on our website at DuelingUrgers.com for new shows and articles pertaining to some of your favorite geek news. Uh, Also, be sure to... I don't even know why I keep reading that. (laughs) If you want to write for us, though, do it. We'll publish that shit. Yeah. Sometimes your laughs don't come through, so I I can hear them at the at the briefest of seconds. Okay. Um, but sometimes they don't come through on the podcast. I think oh, it's well. just yeah, yeah, it's fine. I just you're making some, me laugh. I I I'm glad that I am, but it's sometimes it's funny to listen back to, and then just silence, even though I know that you laughed. <laughs> yeah. And finally, be sure to leave us a five star review on iTunes or find us on YouTube, iHeartRadio, literally anywhere you can find a podcast, Google Podcasts, uh, fucking any everywhere, everywhere. 
all of it. Everywhere Andorra, you can find a podcast. Everywhere. Everywhere. I've become the drunken uncle. So until yeah. next week, Ogres, I, I want to do it next week, Brandon. Okay. I'm off Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Of next week? Of next week. Wednesday it is. Wednesday it is. You're going to pick the day that Ginger and I are both off. Okay. Can we do Tuesday? I cannot do Tuesday. I play a D&D game with Larry. Okay. Then then uh, we will shoot for Wednesday, and we'll talk about the time at a later date. All right. Sounds good. All right. So until next week, Ogres, keep your clubs blunt. And your tusks sharp. Good, good night. Good night. Do it again. One, two, three. Good, Good night. night. You, your delay is awful. <laughs> I'm delaying purposely, though. Am why I not supposed you, to be? Why are you delaying so long? No, I'm really not. I think it is my delay on my mic. Ready? One, two, three. Good night. Good night. Hey, mazel. All right, we got it. Wow, there is a pause then, because I was pausing. I was giving it a pause after you said three, and I was waiting for you to start. So that's yeah. why my delay was there. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Hey, that's cool. We got it in the end, and that's where we like it the best. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to mute everybody. Good night.